a winner doesn't ask how the world is, but how it should be. And there is no doubt that Aizen's last statement at the end of the Arankara arc explains some of his philosophy and his true goal, which he was striving to achieve and his goal that contradicts the policy of the Shinigami and nobles. Hello guys, it's me Simu Orohara and in this video I will talk about Aizen's real goal and his real vision, which he spoke about in one of the side chapters in the last novel of Can't Fear Your Own World. Aizen Sosuke's goal is as simple as it may seem but at the same time it's complex and shows that whoever knows the truth of the bleach words and how they were built and on what basis they were built he has two options or three options. The first option is to accept the history of the world and agree with that history and believe in it. Therefore, the current world must remain as it is, without any change to its foundation. And the second option is to be receptive to this history of the world, but don't agree with the events that occurred in it in the past, but at the same time agree that the foundation shouldn't be changed and so as not to destroy the current worlds. Meaning it is as if you are saying, it is true, the world is built on a sin, but what are we going to do? We cannot destroy everything just because the world is built on that scene, but we must preserve the current gains. And there is a third and the final option which is the opposite of the previous two options. The owner of this option knew the whole truth without any forgery or lying and on its basis they saw that the current worlds were built based on the scene and therefore the worlds and the way they run are all wrong. It is as if they believe that the world tree should be repaired from its rotten root not by pruning and reshaping its thrones. And the owner of this option are Aizen Sosuke and Yuabach. Even if each one of them try to revolt against the existing system in his way and according to his vision. And so first of all, let's talk about the true story of the Bleach world and so that everyone understand this topic clearly. And as I said in a several videos, that three well known Bleach worlds were once one world. And in that world, there was no concept of death and life. Or let's say, in other words, there was no such thing as death. Or rather, there was a certain cycle of Rishi that was not explained how it works. And at some point in that world, the Holo appeared and became part of that cycle of Rishi. And so the Holo started devouring humans, and thus the world seemed to be heading into a state of chaos. And as you know, this event coincided with the appearance of creatures with supernatural powers such as Ichibi as well Ryu, who protected the world from the Holos by annihilating them from existence. Then the ancestors of the great noble families and they are the most important link in this whole matter, they used Ryu by making him submit to their will by dividing the world into three realms. Not only did they make him uh, divide the worlds, but they sailed him and cut off his organs. They made him in a humiliating state so that he became just a backbone of the world without any real desire. That's why this action made by the ancestors was called original sin. And this sin was covered up secretly because the location of Ryu was separated by making the Ryu Palace separate from the Serechi in a special dimension. And therefore all the inhabitants of the Soul Society and even most of the Shinigami don't know anything about Ryo except that his presence is necessary for the survival of the worlds. For example, Rangiku has information that there is a royal family and that the Shinigami has a ruler who is Ryo. But did she know the truth about him? No, she didn't. Ryo was sealed and caught and surrounded by royal guards who are the Zero Squad as well as noble families. And we might say that Ichibi and the ancestors of the noble families and those who came after them are among the first party and the owner of the first choice. They witnessed the original scene and agreed to it and they saw that what Ryo had done was the best thing the sacrifice of one person to build new worlds in which billions of souls live normally are a good deal. Of course, many nobles don't care about souls, but they desire to capture the power and control Ryu. On the other side, there may be personalities such as the Sotaichu Yamamoto, Ukitake, or Kyoraku, and it is possible to even Orohara Kiski, although we don't know his real goal. But from what these characters did as acts, they showed that they don't agree with what the ancestors did in the past. 
but what was done has been done. Therefore, we cannot let the words be destroyed because someone doesn't agree with what happened in the past. That's why we find that even if there are differences between their squad and the nobles and some Shinigami characters about the past, they all, meaning the two parties, agree that the current system must be protected and shouldn't be destroyed. And perhaps the scene of Aizen Sosuke and Orohara Kiski illustrates the contrast between the two positions. And here we come to the third party who are the opponents of the original scene and the current system of the worlds. Yu Habach was acquainted with the story of Ryu in his past because he had a direct relationship with Ryu, whether he is his biological son or the embodiment of his powers. What is important is that Yu Habach saw the current system and the new worlds as a bad idea because it made death a part of the cycle of life. He wanted the world back to how it was before the new worlds were formed. That's why Yu Habach had a destructive vision and we noticed that even in the way he invaded the soul society. He was following a scorched earth policy by eliminating everything and then rebuilding a real world free of death. And here we come to Aizen Sosuke. But before we talk about Aizen Sosuke, don't you notice with me that everyone I mentioned now shares a certain point. They know what happened in the past. The ancestors in Ichibi lived in the period of the original scene and were even a part of it. Orohara Kiske also knew what happened to Ryu and knew the secrets of the noble families and Kyoraku also is also aware of the reality of the world and what he said with Ichibi in the first scenes of the first part of the novel is a clear evidence of that. The important thing is that your choice is determined by your knowledge of the whole truth and Aizen Sosuke knew the whole truth even before he announced his betrayal to everyone. And maybe you don't know this, but Aizen Sosuke even knew the war that took place between Yu Habach and Yamamoto a thousand years ago. He even knew Yu Habach's real goal, and Aizen Sosuke knew the five noble families and how their ancestors, led by Tsuna Yashiro, built the new worlds with the sacrifice of Ryu. Some of you may say, where did you find this? Good question, because this answer clearly explains, as I mentioned early, Aizen's goal. In the second part of the novel, a separate chapter was added, and this chapter was a flashback of Aizen, Sosuke and Chosen, and it was almost in the period of the events of Ishin's past, meaning 20 years before the events of the beginning of the story. Because Kobo made a sketch that illustrates the scenes of Aizen, Sosuke and Chosen's conversation. Chosen was in this shape, and this form corresponds to the form in which he appeared in the flashback of everything but the rain. The important thing is that this scene between them took place before or after the fight between White and Ishin, and I tend to say that this scene took place before the incident of that fight. What is important in that conversation is that Tosin, this latter, had some doubts and fears whether about Aizen or even himself, that he hates the Shinigami because they let Tokinada get away of his crime, killing his wife which is Tosin's friend. Just because he is noble and one of the four great noble families, they let him get away of his crime. And he seemed to wonder whether he had the right to do something against this world because he moved by his grudge, not by a clear vision. And here Aizen will answer him that neither he nor Aizen himself has the right to judge the world because the world that exists now is built on the foundation of a sin. And here Aizen Sosuke will say a very important word to Tosin. He told him he doesn't want to return the current world to the previous world that it was, as he wanted the founder of the Quincy who attacked the social society in the past. And this guy shows, as I said, that Aizen Sosuke had knowledge of Yu Wabach and even that he knew the reason why he started the war 1000 years ago. The important thing is that Aizen Sosuke adds and clarifies why he is against the policy of Yu Wabach by saying that he doesn't want to deprive people of the reasons that make them truly humans. And here he meant death 
because Jorabach, as we said, wanted a world without death, and Eisen was not in agreement with this policy, and he talked about it in the last chapter of the manga, chapter 686. That's why Eisen Soski said to Tosin, this is exactly why I will bring down the linchpin of the way of the world, the symbol of the soul reaper's sin, the greatest sacrifice, the soul king in heaven. And this explains Eisen Soski's main goal. He wanted to overthrow Ryu, because he didn't want to be uh, under control of a helpless person, he has no power or authority. Aizen even called him the Thin, which is a sign of the amount of contempt he has for Ryu, and how he considered Ryu's location as an empty throne. Aizen Sosuke was strong even without the Hogyoku, he even reached his highest level as a Shinigami in terms of everything, but he knew for sure that if he wanted to bring down Ryu, he would need more strength, and as long as he knows the original sin and even knows the goal of Yuhabach, Aizen Sosuke certainly knows the members of the Zero Squad and what they are capable of doing. So he wanted to make Hokyoku so that he would be able to confront whether the member of the Zero Squad and any obstacles he might face in the future. And while making Hokyoku and the experiments of brick barriers between races, he created different types of hollows and the most prominent of them was white. But the experience that can be considered the most complicated one is the experience of Ichigo Kurosaki. It was indeed chance or fate that was the first factor in this experience of meeting Ishin Shiba, White and the intervention of Masaki. All of these factors made something exciting to be added to Aizen Sosuke's greatest plan. Like if he was saying, I want to overthrow Ryo and do experiments in this context and now there is another completely new experiment that will help me in this plan, and the experience of marrying a Shinigami and Quincy woman who has a hollow inside her. And here I want to talk about the opinion of those who say that Aizen's goal is to fight someone with his level of strength because he was feeling lonely. This in my opinion is nonsense, because it stems from the perspective of another character, which is Ichigo. And Aizen may be feeling lonely, but this is no reason to even say that he wanted a strong person to get rid of that loneliness or that he wanted to get rid of his strength and return as a normal Shinigami. A distinction must be made between what Aizen was striving for and what might be one aspect of his personality. Because I may personally suffer from loneliness, but this doesn't mean I will give up on my goal because I suffer from loneliness. Aizen also stated from the beginning in that flashback that he wanted to bring down the Soul King and the world that built on that sin. That's why Aizen Sosuke had a different vision whether about the Shinigami and how they want to preserve Ryo and its old foundation, as well as a different view even of Yuabach, who wanted the world without death. Aizen wanted the living to have a kind of autonomy that makes them real humans being, or let's say beings that have some kind of decision. Therefore we find that even Aizen's policy in the war against the Gute 13 wasn't as brutal and destructive as Yuabach. And someone might say, but he wanted to sacrifice the people of Karakora city. True, he would have done it, but compare it to what Yuhabach would have done. All worlds would be destroyed. For all this, I think that Aizen Sosuke's real goal was to establish himself as a true ruler of the worlds, not like Ryu, who was like a toy in the hands of the ancestors, so that he would have become able to move between the worlds without falling and thus ending the, the era of that sealed king in that cocoon. And perhaps he would even change the nature of the Serechi and Shinigami. And so Aizen would make the world run in the right way, ridding itself of the original sin uh, of noble families. So guys, this is the end of my video about Aizen Sosuke. Tell me your opinion in the comments and see you guys in my next video.